Okay, continuing our bonus reviews of kit. Uh, today we're going to talk about a very important aspect of VIP protection, and that is the Bodyguard Medical Pack. And the pack that I'm going to talk about, I bought in 1984 uh, while working on um, a, a long-term protection team uh, looking after uh, a royal family at their residence uh, near Wargrave. And um, I was talking about medical um, factors with one of the uh, team members who had served as a patrol medic uh, in uh, the SAS. And I'd been fed up with some of the equipment we'd been issued in the past. I, I was on another uh, royal uh, protection team and we asked for a medical kit to be provided by the company uh, for the backup car. And uh, they gave us a small uh, plastic box from Boots, um, which was just an out kit, really. So <clears throat> the uh, chap I was talking to, he mentioned that a company in Hereford um, had just produced some very, very specialist kit. And he was going back uh, on leave and I asked him to pick up one of the packs for me, which he did. And it's this one. And it was produced by a company called Vos and Brown. And um, Dave Vos had served in 22 SAS and also in the Rhodesian SAS. And Paul Brown was from the uh, Army Medical Corps and was um, an instructor in medical training uh, at Hereford. And he used to run the famous courses they do there to produce the patrol medics. So together, they got together and they offered training and also uh, specialized equipment. This pack, it's a Kudura pack and uh, it's very well made. It's, it's um, served me well over the years and it has um, shoulder straps uh, like a Bergen. Uh, because the whole idea is the pack should be hands-free. You've got the pack on and you can still use your hands. And uh, I actually added a, a more robust shoulder strap to it, which I'll show you. Uh, this one, which I got from another pack. Um, so it just goes over the one shoulder. Uh, and on it, I've got this little uh, pouch secured to the strap, which has... Um, sterile gloves so the idea as you're approaching the incident you can glove up ready to go um, there's all sorts of um, mesh pouches inside uh, i've emptied it of the content so i can talk about all, all the stuff at the moment uh, and there's a side pouch as well um, but very very handy and a, a well-made piece of kit the um, United States Secret Service has a concept called 10 minute medicine where the idea is they stabilize a casualty uh, for 10 minutes uh, because that's the window for professional help arriving in most of their cases. The military close protection uh, concept focuses on something like 24 hours of stabilizing a casualty in a hostile environment. So the equipment must reflect that. And um, the pack, as it came, it came with a, a lot of different things in which we'll talk about. But over time, I've added um, some up upgrades to it because this pack from 1984 was before uh, tactical combat casualty care was developed. So uh, a lot of the concept, a lot of the training and a lot of the equipment has changed over the years for the better. Uh, and particularly in more recent years, it's been trialed very, very thoroughly in the war on terror. Okay, so uh, one of the things that the pack has is the ability to stop bleeding. Uh, gunshot wounds, that kind of thing. And it has um, a couple of the large wound dressings. And this is the, it's called a burn or shell dressing. And on the back, 
the instructions are also in Arabic because the regiment was operating in the Middle East uh, a great deal in those days. Uh, I've added and or replaced those with the more modern Israeli dressings uh, and I would actually upgrade to the T3 at the moment. Uh, the old dressings work but the uh, Israeli dressing just does a few things very very well and it's also very user friendly. Um, the other thing is the CAT, Combat Application Tourniquet, uh, which what hadn't been invented back then and also tourniquets were even in the military weren't um, kind of an issue item. They did show you how to improvise them in various ways but it, it's better to have the proper kit. So the tourniquet and um, we have quick lock. Now there are other things, cell locks and so on. Um, have the one that does the job for you, obviously. Another piece of kit is this triangular bandage, which was designed uh, by Lofty. And it was um, marketed out of Hereford. It's um, camouflage for military use, and it's also flame proof. And Lofty gave me a whole load of these, and they're in... Uh, all my packs and also uh, I've given them away to quite a few people uh, who need them. Uh, another little item might be useful is a light stick. In there. Now this piece of kit is, is in the original pack and I don't see it listed uh, in in many packs these days and what it is it's a mucus extractor and the idea is that if the casualty uh, has the airway blocked by uh, mucus or similar viscous material a big bolus of it blocking your air then you, you can suck it out with this and the material goes in, into here and it doesn't go into your mouth so it, it's um, it's very useful and um, it's one that's not used very much. Another thing is um, a large burn sheet because obviously with a VIP uh, likely attacks can include burns and blast and a burn sheet, burn casualty sheet. And this is um, to put on the casualty and cool them down using saline. Come to airways and a ladle mask and nasopharyngeal airway. Okay, I, I probably best have a couple of different sizes in there. And also chest seal. This one is the Rus Russell chest seal. And uh, there are other types. There's the Asherman, of course. And you should really have two uh, for the entrance and exit wounds. Now, a thing I added is this little pack here, which I picked up in a military shop in Liverpool. A, a chap from Liverpool who had served in the Foreign Legion and then done some mercenary work. Uh, I put this pack together and, and then he sold it. He'd gone out of that business and I, I picked it up at a reasonable price and it, it it contains lots of surgical instruments um scissors uh, bandage scissors uh, hemostats or arterial forceps uh, I've, I've put a tough cuts in there and it it also includes uh, a suture kit uh, which can be useful if you know how to use it so that's an important part of the kit. Another item which came with the original kit and I've got the information here is this 
and it's the splint set it's a set of splints and long they got velcro and they've got the day glow high visibility markers on them and this is the information that Bowles and Brown supplied on it and it lists all the things you can do with it now in a lot of first aid training now they ignore a splinting of of brakes uh, because again it's kind of like the 10 minute medicine you're probably um, waiting for the paramedics to come and, and uh, transport the victim in an overseas slash um, hostile environment you're going to have to do it yourself particularly if you're going to have to uh, extract the vip or the casualty and the splints are invaluable for that splinting uh, above and below the um, the brake uh, also you can use these as as um, around the body as, as um, a high visibility um, brassard uh, at the scene of an incident for example a road traffic incident uh, and you can also loop them together with the velcro and make a long lifeline for pulling somebody out of water or from a, an obstructed area and so on and included in with the splints is a cervical collar uh, invaluable again with any casualties who've been subject to an impact injury another uh, item that was in the original pack is this and within this is uh, a full length bag to put the casualty to keep them away from the elements it's strong material it's not it's not like um the not normal um uh, uh, just the foil bags this is um very very strong so it will retain the heat or keep them out of the weather it's also got handles and the whole thing becomes a stretcher for evacuating uh, the casualty And then this was an optional extra in the pack. It's a ceramic trauma plate, which will stop rifle fire. And the, the idea um, with a lot of the, the equipment is it has a, a dual purpose. So you're carrying your medical kit, but you've got the means of protecting yourself from gunfire. And you, you know, it would protect the whole torso if you get down behind this while you extract the VIP to safety. Then included, or I've included within the pack, uh, a dedicated travel pack for operating overseas. And some of the items in it, insect repellent and painkillers. Now in the original uh, bodyguard pack, they recommended that you use Temgesic. And Temgesic is a very, very strong painkiller, which was available back then in the 80s. And people, they've actually done surgery under tem Temgesic in, in um, survival situations. Uh, unfortunately, the drug addicts got hold of it and started injecting it. And it's now become a prescription and uh, restricted uh, medication. So uh, you can't get hold of it and you certainly wouldn't be advised to travel with it so if you're in the military you you may be at, well the military teams can get hold of um, the fentanyl lollipops for pain management but for the civilian use probably the best thing is aspirin and coedine so you take a, a, a double um, application of that this there's no it, the um, name's been rubbed off. This is a freeze gel for sunburn. And we also have uh, rehydrate powder. We have various forms of 
medication for upset stomachs, uh, for um, that is, is very, very common in uh, overseas areas. Rehydration again. Uh, ibuprofen tablets for reducing inflammation. Uh, sunscreen for preventing sunburn, which is important, obviously. And a couple of little things that we we have in here. Um, eye drops for eye injuries or uh, eye problems. And okay for the lips and uh, you can also use um, the Vaseline or beeswax for um, preventing chapped lips and um, these things for gum and uh, sores around the mouth particularly for children if a VIP has children we found that useful and the whole thing about this is is being able to offer a service and uh and, and another thing uh I, I didn't bring it in with this is uh, a packet of wet wipes and uh, i was on a job once and i was in the the limousine with um the ruler's wife and children we were going somewhere and one of the children was sick in the car we pulled over i got this pack i had it with me and opened it up my got the wet wipes we were able to clean everything up clean the child and so on and um the princess saw the kit and she she was immediately struck by uh how we were able to help her family and deal with it in all aspects um beyond what the normal kind of bodyguard image was so that's been a plus and the fact is you're much more likely to use the skills uh, and, and the equipment from the medical side rather than the hard skills and the weapons and so on. So that's a, that's a point to consider. And then uh, small pack of things like um, uh, uh, band-aids and things like that for minor cuts, tweezers for getting rid of splinters and all, all that, which again particularly with the family may, may be uh, needed and a, a plus and then in the pack we have this which is is it the medical pro forma so all the medical details uh, blood type uh, name of the personal physician where the medical main medical records are held uh, medical history, illnesses, current medications, allergies, vaccinations, all of that. Um, and there's one for the VIP, every member of his family and every member of the team. And they're held in the ops room and they're also held by the team medic in a pouch on the medic pack. Uh, another item that... Uh, I took out just a while ago and I forgot to put it back in is uh, an EpiPen uh, it's um, very very important if uh, the, anybody's got allergies that you carry a couple of EpiPens um, to counter severe anaphylactic shock so I think that's just about it um, covered a lot, of, a lot of the equipment as I say it's always being updated there's new stuff comes out and um, you should keep current and the most important thing is to train with this stuff um, and train in scenario type situations.